Hi everyone. Um, welcome to the Ladies Project. Uh, the Ladies Project is doing a little tutorial on the Dutch Reformed Church in Waterfleet, New York. And um, you know, I grew up here, so I came back to do um, some informational stuff. And uh, this is the church actually that was in operation. It's closed down now, so they kind of use it for part of the um, historical museum. And this over here is part of the historical museum. And in here they have all kinds of artifacts from from Watervliet, things that uh, you know used to be here, and um, lots of lots of historical stuff. The people here are very nice. You guys get a chance. Come on in, and stop in to see these guys. Um, I'm going to take you in in just a second, but um, first I want to show you this this bell. Here was, uh, this is their original bell um, that was actually a uh, beautiful bell too. It's a manly bell, uh, which actually originated in Watervliet. We'll get into that a little bit later. But this is the bell that actually used to be up in the, their bell tower up here. Uh, they had moved the St. Patrick's bell from St. Patrick's Cathedral in Watervliet on 19th Street. Um, where it used to be, they moved that to the foot of the Congress Street Bridge now. So, um, lots of stuff in here to see. Uh, hopefully you guys watch the video. If you do, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my YouTube page, uh, Skyscraper Junkie. Uh, would be appreciated. Comments are always welcome, good or bad. So, let's, uh, let's take you guys in here. And let's see all the neat little stuff they got in here. Okay, so, um, perfect. I'm going to talk a little bit low here, obviously, uh, but this is the Historical Museum in Waterfleet, New York, and it has a lot of things in here. So I'm going to go through and give you guys a little bit of tour. Um, we'll do just a quick pan and scan so you can see it, and then what I'll do is I'll go through some of the exhibits and we'll, uh, we'll be on our way. Here was the original clock that was on the inside of the building and what they used to do is they used to take these pieces if you had a wake-up call and they would put it down here they would put it down here and it would represent the time that you needed to be woke up so if there was a tag on there the bell would actually chime and it would let you know what room number up here like 2 11 what time they wanted to get up and then when you took this off the bell would stop ringing i just thought that was so interesting and this is the uh this is the clock this is the the write-up on the clock you guys can pause this video at any time um like this so if you want to read a little bit more of this so anyways i, I just thought that was extremely interesting and this here is this bed is one of the beds from the hotel as well uh, amazing how this is like all preserved now I'm not going to go through every single thing in here but I will I will go through most of it though um, so you guys can get a, a really good idea of what what this place has. This this is located just off Broadway next to the police station in Water Elite. So um you know feel free to come down here and check some of this out. And these are some of the theaters that were in Water Elite back in the day. You got the Grand Theater at 20 2431 Third Avenue. And then you've got the family theater at 110 16th Street and the Strand Theater at 374 3rd Avenue. Um, awesome stuff. And we also have a, a vintage potty. Huh? Okay. So we'll move on from that. And very, very interesting stuff.
William Parker. This was William Parker. This was the um, this was the owner of Parker Brothers. Actually, I actually remember him because uh, once again, one of the reasons why I'm doing this tutorial is because um, I grew up in Waterfleet, so. Um, I used to deliver Mr. Parker's uh, paper, newspaper, when I was a child. How weird. But, um, you know, very, very interesting. So there's the Parker. There's the Parker family. Just really great stuff in here. And he was also explaining to me what um, all about the Erie Canal. Now that that's going to be in another uh, tutorial that I'm working on for Water of Late, or I will be working on it. I don't think I've started it yet. I've done some research, but I don't think I've actually started it yet. But um, that will be uh, explained, and and I'll bring you to different places of actually where the Erie Canal actually went through Water of Late and what it did and how it came about and how it was dug out and all that kind of thing. So um, you know, kind of stay tuned for that if you're interested in the history part of things. So World War II veterans, April 23rd, 2013. Um, this, is, uh, this is over by the old, I think this is over by the old Price Chopper. If I'm not mistaken, I could be mistaken. It's an old cast iron bench. And then this section over here is all about the Erie Canal. Um, and it gives you like some history and exactly where the canal, I thought this was actually really, really interesting. And this is, um, the way locks and it, and then here, this shows you exactly where the Erie Canal was, which was, um, it actually ran up through here which I thought was really interesting and I never really even thought about the, the Erie Canal even though we learned about it in school a little bit it was just one of those things that was just I don't know I guess it never really interested me on some level but um, now I'm really interested in it so that's why I'm bringing you guys this so the guy that runs this um, really nice guy him and his wife um, and this is the map that's the map I just showed you. Um, really nice people, but willing to talk, let you film, take as many pictures as you'd like to. So he actually turned around and he made this. This is an Erie Canal boat, uh, the lack. Um, he actually scaled this to 1 16th. Look at the work on this. He did a phenomenal job on this boat. I mean, just a great woodworker. This guy's really, really good at what he does. So, kind of, kind of amazing. It took them a lot to put this museum together. Uh, but, and this is all a section on the Erie Canal. And this is some of the stuff that they use. You know, it's weird because, you know, people of my generation or the people that are now 20 years old, uh, 25 years old, you know, they don't want to, you know, no offense, but, you know, a lot of times the, the upcoming generation doesn't want to really do that much as far as lifting and pulling and pushing. You got to remember the Erie Canal was 363 miles long and it was dug out by hand. It was 40 feet wide and it was four feet deep and you had to cut down trees and you had to do all kinds of stuff and remove rock and, I mean, can you imagine doing that? I mean... 
took them eight years to build that from Boston all the way to where we are here today. And these, these pictures show like some of the bridges um, that were in Waterville 8 for yeah, this one here was the, the Erie Canal and Port Schuyler between 5th and 6th. Uh, this was the Upper Troy. This one here is the Upper Troy Lock between 23rd Street. And they got some really, really good photographs here as well. And this here is where the, uh, the Erie Canal Lock was, 23rd Street and Water Valley, right here. Very neat stuff. These bells are really cool too. These are the bells. Very neat. And this place was located right here. The Manali Bells. This was actually located right across the street from the police station um, where it is located right now. And this is actually was located where the public library, the Waterbury Public Library was. And everybody bought their bells from from this from this place so it was in in effect from 1826 to 1951 so a long run a very very long run this is one of the original signs for the So we'll uh, go over here. And he built, actually, this foundation actually built the St. Patrick's Church Bell in Water Vliet, which that now is located on the side of, right at the foot of Congress Street Bridge. And the bell for this church in here is located right outside uh, this building. So you get a chance to take a peek at that if you're interested in seeing the, um, the bell the St. Patrick's Bell that was in the tower. That's now on display for everyone to see. Oh, that's old. This is really interesting. These are bank notes from, uh, this is the Water Vliet 1, 2, 3, and $5 bank notes from West Troy above were issued in 1838. In 1836, Schuyler, John Schuyler established the first bank in West Troy and Broadway and Buffalo Street, 15th Street now. Um, the very end, look at this, huh? Bank notes from 18. 1838. These are really cool. I, I think I don't think anybody would ever see these if they didn't come here. Very good stuff. And then the Bank of West Troy. Here's some bank notes as well. 
that has water relief stamped on them. And the shoes. Here's a gun flap holster as well from World War II. Right here. And these here, these are these are this is the first time I've seen these two. These are 12 pound, 12 pound cannonballs. Right here, 12 pound cannonballs. Whew. You don't think 12 pounds is a lot of weight until you move that, I'll tell you. Okay, so. So this is interesting. Water Blade Arsenal leather carriage box. Very, very interesting. And then this over here is 1874 4570 caliber cartridge box. Look at that. There's a place on uh, the Water Blade Arsenal here. I will do a little bit of a tutorial on that too as soon as I do the uh, as soon as I do the tutorial on Water of Elite and the reason why they basically keep it in short the reason why the Water of Elite Arsenal came about is because it was centrally located um, to um, distribute our goods and firearms to people of the War of 1812 um, and then this is just a, a little timeline here very interesting. You're going to be going to be surprised when I do the tutorial on Water of Elite and the information that's actually on the research that I did on the Water of Elite Arsenal. Kind of very cool how it came about and how much money that it cost to to buy the arsenal and how many how many acres uh, that was bought. So, you know, again, stay tuned for that. That's going to be that's going to be pretty neat. This here is part of a trolley track, right here, and this was um, trolley track from Genesee, Genesee Street. So apparently Genesee Street was later turned into 19th Street. So there's a little trivia for you, and this is one of the old, this is one of the old trolley tracks. Very cool. Look at that. Very interesting. <laughs> Okay, so on this side over here, which is really neat, this is very cool. Um, this is uh, Danino's, the people that have been around for for quite some time. If you remember uh, Danino's um, grocery store, basically, uh, he was telling me that they cleaned out the basement of that place, apparently. And this is the old deli slicer. If you guys remember what the old deli slicers used to be. This is original from Danilo's um, Meat Market. And then they also have the the scale that they weigh on they weigh your meats on. They also have the scale, which is super interesting. And then they have the sausage maker as well. So one thing that I did not realize, um, I'll get to that in just a second. Let me show you some of these pictures of some of the grocery stores in Water Elite. These are all, these are all old grocery stores that were in Water Elite. And I think the thing that's really interesting is the next thing that I'm going to show you guys. And again, if I'm going too fast for you guys, you can pause this video at any time to get a better look at some of these stores if I'm not doing a 
a good job with this. Or Star Grocery Store. And then of course Daisies and Hollies. We all know that. People from Waterville, we all know that. Bird's Grocery Store, 17, seven, or I'm sorry, 717 19th Street. I do not remember that. Okay, so, so, so here we go. This is from 1910. Now you people that are from Waterville, you tell me if you recognize all of these grocery stores. Now Waterville, it's not that big. So there's a lot of stores here. Check this out. These are all grocery stores. I was amazed when he told me about these stores because I grew up here pretty much my my whole youth and into my teenage years. I had no idea about most of these stores. When I grew up here, it was mostly Morelli's, Geno's. You know, you had your A&P, you know, those type of things. Okay, so there's stores from 1910. Check this out. Over in, uh, here's the, the Nino's um, banner as well up here, which is nice that he's got that up here. So check this out. This is 1950 Water Bleach stores. Check out all these. Now to me that's crazy because you guys that are from Water Bleed, you know damn well that Water Bleed's not that big. And there must have been a store on every single corner. That's the only thing I can think of. But um, there's some trivia for you right there if you go do trivia. Now when I seen this section, I thought that this was uh, Sam's on 25th Street. He had it set up like Sam's. It is not. It's just a conglomeration of a lot of different things. But check this out. You guys remember some of these? Remember? Remember these? Remember the old stamps? Or the, you push the, it's amazing. The stuff he's got, look at. Anybody remember these? Look at this. You guys remember these? And then, you know, everybody remembers dots, right? You ate more paper than candy, basically. <laughs> so, um, I mean, look at the old mounds. Look at the old mounds box. Look at that. That's what they used to look like, 10 cents. And then the baby roots. It's great to see some of this stuff. Look at some of this stuff. Save the baby. How many memories does this stuff bring back, huh? Old medicine gets new push. All right, so <laughs> the other day I had asked him about this stuff, and I said to him the thing that stuck out the most for me was this old cash register. And I asked him, I said to him, can I play with this? And he says, yeah, you can. So this is an old cash register. This is really, really old. Check this out. I remember going to grocery stores and then ringing your groceries up like this. So again, I've got to play with it. So it's like $1 and then you can open up the drawer. You can open up the, uh, watch me break it, right? I think I broke it. There we go. And then open up the drawer. And remember, remember these old rollers? Let me get my hand out of the way. Remember the old rollers that kept the money down? I wouldn't have done that if I didn't have permission, by the way. Okay. So, 
And he also told me that this is original butcher paper right here. This is original butcher paper from, I can't remember where he said it was actually butcher paper from, but that is butcher paper from way back. And look at the, look at the markings on it. And look at some of the, look at some of the old, the old, uh, old boxes on how things came years ago. Diamond matches hasn't really changed that much. Look at camel cigarettes. You roll your own. Alka Seltzer. Arm and Hammer. That's changed dramatically. This is where you have your spices came. The cinnamon and sugar, your all spices. I remember these. I remember the Ann Page Allspice stuff. I remember all these cans, or at least seeing them. Look at the Brillo, how that was. That's crazy. Talcum powder. <laughs> remember that. That's crazy. Baker's Extract down on the end. Crazy stuff. Chasing Sanborn coffee, that's changed dramatically as well. Look, and then you got right here, you got you got the old you got the old butcher string. There's some stoneware that they collected over the years. West Troy. This here was pretty neat when I seen this. This is an old, this is an old refrigerator from GE from the 1920s right here. This was after, obviously. Um, everything had claw feet years ago. Um, that was the style. But um, I mean, this is what the, this is what the inside of it looks like. So interesting. That was the size of it, and then this was your freezer. So people that are complaining that you don't have enough freezer space, there you go. That was your freezer years ago. And here's an old, I think this is an old pot belly stove too. Look at that. Okay. So... So here's one thing that's really, really neat that was just pointed out to me not that long ago. For you people that went to Immaculate Conception, you know that the pastor, the priest, was Father Watroba. This is um, Father Watroba. He was actually the, cap, the uh, chaplain of the Wood of Late Firefighters. And apparently his wife was telling me that this is actually his original coat. And then it's also, that's his coat. And then this is also his fire hat down yeah, here. Very, very neat. Good stuff here. And then they also have, they also have like a little gift area. You can buy like postcards and, and books and stuff like that. And here's some of the prices on the museum store prices. And they just have like little postcards and stuff that you can buy, brochures and booklets and pamphlets that they put together and book on the Waterfleet Arsenal and, uh, you know, stuff like that if you want to buy some stuff. So this is probably uh, one of the most interesting things for me. These are the church's 
of Order of the Late. And just as you, just as you walk in here, this was really, really neat. Um, St. Patrick's um, that they destroyed, basically, that's kind of how I look at it in Water of the Late. This is an old confessioner, confessional kneeler right here. And that's, that's actually from the church. So who knows how old that is. And then you also have sitting on it, you also have the collection, the collection basket from them too. And that's original. That's what they were using as well. And they also have a collection basket from St. Bridges right here. This is from St. Bridges. And then here, this right here, is from the choirs uh, of St. Patrick's. So St. Patrick's had a choir, and this is what they wore on top of their uniform. Um, but the other one is from uh, this church. It's actually here, the Dutch church. That's the altar boy uniforms, I believe. So we're going to go through this, and we're going to see the St. Bridget's class of 2014 And then above that, you have the Reformed Presbyterian Dutch Church. Or I mis misspoke on that one. Um, and this is what this this is what this church looked like. And above it is the Germain Memorial Presbyterian Church, and that was located at Fifth Avenue and Sixth Street. And that's the top one right there. And if you come over a little bit, the United Methodist Church, 1401 First Avenue. And then you have the North Reformed Pres or, um, uh, Church on 1501 First Avenue right there. And I think everybody in Waterbury is... is it's so sad to see this kind of thing go, but this is St. Patrick's. This is what St. Patrick's um, looked like. And if you watch my other video, or actually it, it, it's in this video, actually, that cross that's on the top over here, um, I actually touched that, which was a treat. They actually have this in the museum on the church side. Not too many people say can say that they actually touched that cross that was on top of St. Patrick's. Ohio Street Methodist Church. The original, look at that, the original Immaculate Conception Church in 7th Avenue and 25th Street. I actually went to school there. And everybody knows the Sacred Heart of Mary Church up on top. And then here's St. Bridges right here. the First Baptist Church. It's a lot of glare because there's a window behind me. The First Baptist Church, 16th Street and 3rd Avenue right there. The First Presbyterian Church, 23rd Street and 9th Ave. This church is located on Troy Schenectady Road. I've never been to it. I don't know much about it. But that's a hundred on uh, Troy Schenectady Road. That's the St. Peter's um, Episcopal Church. So here, this is what St. Patrick's used to look like before they demolished it in Water Relief. This was on 6th Avenue and 19th Street. Good old St. Patrick's. And this here, this here was one of the original, it is missing, um, actually Jesus, it's on the cross. And it, it, they don't have it, I asked about that, and they don't have it, but this is one of the um, 
processional crosses that they used to carry um, down the aisle way before Mass. And then you have, um, you have some other stuff over here, the Trinity Church up on top. And then you have St. Nicholas's. That's in Water Blade, that second photo up on top, which that will be in my Water Blade walkthrough as well. And this is Immaculate Heart of Mary up on top. And then this one here is Mapping Conception Church on 25th Street. And this is Our Lady of Mount Carmel. A lot of churches, a lot of churches, a lot of little stores. So this is a, it's a great little area that they put together in here. And here, here is the candle light and snuffer. They used to snuff out all the candles with that. The First Presbyterian Church uh, Holy Bible. And here's the the the, uh, the board here from from St. Patrick's. This is great stuff. It's really good that they got a lot of stuff from St. Patrick's. It was really it was really cool to see that. And this here, these are the original bricks from when they tore it down. They actually were able to grab some of those. Um, this. <laughs> This is really cool. This is the, this is a Bible. Look at the size of this Bible, right? It's huge. And look at the print on the inside of this. This is very hard to open up, it's huge. So old. And then they have, um, over here they have um, a guest book. Now, this goes back to, all the way back to, I believe, 1952. If I'm not mistaken, this is what you would sign when you walked in a church. Yeah, all the way back to 1952. Very interesting. Once it's gone, it's gone, right? Got a lot of stuff here. This is um, this is the original St. Bridget's pew. I know there's a lot of stuff on it, but this is right here. This is the original pew of St. Bridget's. And then on the other side here, they actually have an original pew from... Uh, St. Patrick's as well, which is which is right here. This is the original the original pew. Let me get it from this side for you. That's the original pew from St. Patrick's. And then they, this is this, this is one of the original um, pipe organs. And that's from this church. This is from the North Dutch Reformed Church. Okay, so I think I've, I think I've, uh, I think I've showed you all I can in here. I hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Um, if you guys enjoyed it, put a thumbs up. Uh, if you'd like, we're going to go do another section. We're going to go into the church. So we'll just do a, a little. A little outro here um you know if you like this go to my youtube channel skyscraper junkie like if you liked it if you don't like leave comments if you liked it or didn't like it it's up to you 
Um, these are just things that interest me. This is why I post these things on my Facebook page. Or, I'm sorry, on my YouTube channel. But yeah, hit the notification bell, and um, we'll see you on the other side. We'll do a, we'll do a church uh, uh, little tutorial. Okay, so um, I'm going to be talking low in here, but we just walked inside this church, and most of this stuff here, there's a lot of little treats in here. Um, I know that there was a fire here, uh, apparently, that uh, gutted this whole place except for uh, the four walls, and it was remodeled and redone in 1922 so we're gonna have a walk in here um, they're in the middle of doing some stuff in here so they're this is part of like the museum so there's a, there's some stuff laying around but I mean boy what a treat so uh, one of the first things that one of the first things that I asked him was um, are these pews um, original and he told me that they were not and uh, because of the fire in 1920 I believe um, but these pews are original from what once they remodeled this um, uh, 1922 um, so these these pews are about a hundred years old uh, and they're I mean they're just gorgeous um, you know uh, how beautiful uh, I, I, I was trying to get into some other churches around here, and it's not saying that I wouldn't be able to, but um, I'm really, really happy to to be here uh, and learn a little bit about the history here. Um, one thing I found really, really fascinating: um, if you look, if you look behind each pew, they all still have the original markers on them saying row 23, row 24, row 25, so on and so forth. Um, you know, just, you know, how do you, how do you erase the history of this stuff? But, and then you had a, a place to put your um, belongings right there. I don't see any kneelers. Uh, this is not a Catholic church, so I'm not sure if all churches have kneelers or whatever, but, um, but let's, Let's take a look at this. I'm assuming that this is the original carpeting as well. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I think this might be the original uh, carpeting. But this is what it would this is what it would look like. Uh, the stained glass on the door. This is like almost a hundred years old. It was 1920, 1922-ish, and here we are. 19. I think the fire happened maybe. I want to say like 1920, either 1918 or 1922. I'll I'll correct that if I'm wrong on that. But um, I mean, but all of this inside. The only thing that was left to this was four walls, and everything else inside was completely remodeled. I mean, it's just the old the old light fixtures. I mean, these are this is just all all original original stuff here just so uh so neat you know it's uh and the stained glass this is all you don't see this much anymore either the stained glass is just gorgeous i'll uh get a get a shot of each stained glass here so you guys can see this. I mean, a hundred year old stained glass. I mean, the only thing that gets better than that is what? You know, 200 year old stained glass, right? All right. This is something to see in, this is something to see in person, I'll tell you. I was so uh, so fortunate to get in here. Been having pretty good luck getting into places lately. I don't know why. Um, and then the, again, the organ is the same thing. This organ is gorgeous. I mean, you're going to see these 
um, right here you're going to see the, the heat system for the place now because it's been shut down for so long. But I mean, look at this. Look at this organ. It's 100 years old. I mean, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. All right. Uh, and then the other side of the stained glass, we'll get into uh, some other stuff that's kind of laying around here as well um, as we get going here. A couple of things in here that are really, really interesting to me. Um, and we'll get to that in a second. So this is actually all part of this museum. Like I said, there's things that are laying around, but you know, it, right now it is what it is, and I'm just really happy to uh, to be here. So one thing I was like really, really, really happy with when he when he told me this, and I don't know if you've seen it as I was panning around, but you folks that are from Waterfleet know St. Patrick's Church that was on 19th Street and I'm gonna say 4th, between 4th and 5th Avenue, which is now a price chopper. So check this out. This is super interesting. That gold cross right there is the original cross that was on top of St. Patrick's Cathedral, or not St. Patrick's Cathedral, that's in New York City, um, but St. Patrick's on 19th Street between 4th and 5th Avenue. I mean, this is something to, uh, you know, this is something to, to see. And you guys that uh, are from Water Relief, and you can see the cross on top of the church. And this is this is that this is that cross. Um, so I was super happy uh, when he said that because I love that cross. I used to live close by this, so that is the original cross from St. Patrick's. And then right next to that, he also said that this is the original sign of St. Bridges School, uh, the, or I'm sorry, the, the, the Catholic Church. He said they, they took a saw and they, they cut the six by sixes on the bottom and they grabbed the sign. Obviously they had permission of it, but uh, that's the original St. Bridges sign. And then a few, uh, just amazing. I mean, a lot of people, on YouTube that may watch this might not think that this is any big deal, but for the people from Waterfleet, New York, this is this is all history. We all grew up to seeing these signs, and uh, now you can actually, I mean, you can actually put hands on this now, which is, I mean, in itself is just amazing. The other thing that he also said too is this sign over here that's laying on the floor. This is the original Curtains Grill in Water of Late. This is, you can, you can see where it says Curtains. Um, this is the original sign from Curtains Grill. Uh, very interesting. Very, very interesting, the stuff that they, uh, that they have here. And uh, let's see if we can, if we can get some of this work up here because this is, this is, uh, this is really, really, really nice. Look at some of this stuff. Let's walk over here, get some of this. I mean, I don't think that anything out does St. Patrick's Church, but I mean, this is beautiful. This is uh, another, you can see the, the scalloped work up here. Yeah, nice stuff. Um, and then they have like these all these like little little artifacts over here 
This is the old Tilly ladders um, that you used to, you know, I mean, this is what it was. This is when you used to climb and build and so on and so forth. These are the, these are original too. These are the original ladders that, that uh, we used to use back in the early 1900s, you know. Uh, and then they have all these little um, stained glass. I, I just can't get over the stained glass. It's really, really pretty. Then you have like, you have still have all the old, all the old cast iron radiators and the way the, <coughs> excuse me, the way the wall is broken up like it is. I mean, you don't really see too much of this stuff anymore. So it's, it's really nice that they're preserving this stuff. Okay, so. The other thing that I, and this is, this is the uh, Delaware and Hudson Railroad passenger station in Waterbleed. This was built in, as you can see, you can pause the video if you'd like. Uh, this was built in 1889 18, to uh, 1990. It was demolished in November 14th of 1962. And it was located on 19th Street and 23rd Street. Another thing that I that I really like too is like these lighting fixtures are are very cool, very very neat. Love the old architectural stuff a lot. This is one of the maps of the I believe it's one of the for the canal. If I don't, if I'm, uh, oh this is um. Yeah, this is the the Schuyler map. That you do some history on this, and and you'll see that uh, what this is all about. He was explaining to me all the locks and the, and the and where they used to weigh the boats and all that kind of thing. And we'll, we'll get into that in another segment. Um, but uh, right now, this is kind of this is kind of overwhelming to see all this. I always try to keep my video short, and yet they want. They run into like an hour. I will also be doing um, a tutorial on the before and after uh, of Water Elite as well. So these are just some of the stuff that, that's, uh, that's on the walls here. Uh, here's the old chief of police of Water Elite. No, no more could be expected of any other man, Michael Edwards. Chief of Police Waterville, 1920 to 1922, was born December 31st, 1874. Very, very interesting. So that was the that was the Chief of Police of Waterville. All right. So I don't see any stairs to get up that way, but let's see if we can give you a shot of this beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful church in here. The ceiling is gorgeous. Just to be here and think that this is like a hundred years old. Like all the remodeling process was a hundred years old. So those of you who knows this particular church or has came here, um, for services, for masses, um, this is probably a treat for you guys, I would say. So we'll walk, we'll walk down and show you the other stained glass. I did miss one stained glass on the other side. We might go back to that, we'll see. I'll tell you one thing, this this uh, this cross from St. Patrick's, there's probably not a lot of people that have touched this, but I don't know if you get an idea. 
it's kind of, you think it would be metal, or you think it would be steel or metal, and I think it, I think it is, I think it is metal. There's a little bit of decay, obviously from being up there all those years. So it was metal, and it seemed like it was kind of wrapped in something. I'm not sure what that is, but uh, there's more of that stained glass. And he has a ton of stuff in the other area, actually, like in the, the small museum. But he packed a lot of stuff in this museum. And um, we will get to that. We will get to that shortly in, a, in another segment. I'll be recording these in, in different segments. But we will definitely make sure that... Uh, He's got a whole thing in there on the Erie Canal. Uh, he's got things on how many markets, how many little mom and pop markets were in Waterville at one time. And it's kind of scary because <laughs> I'm from Waterville and I knew of probably a handful, Daisies and Ollie's, Morelli's, uh, Geno's, uh, where they made sausages and their own meats and stuff like that. I didn't think that there was actually as many as uh, he pointed out to me. He's got them all printed out and laminated did a great job on it. Um, wait till you see that later on in the video. I know I was very, very surprised. And that would be a great trivia question of how many uh, stores were actually in the uh, in Water Bleed at one time. Now that we're also going back to like 1920, uh, early 1900s. So, but you just wouldn't believe that there would be that many uh, that many stores, little mom and pop stores. It's almost like there had to be one on every corner. Because <laughs> Waterville is not that big. And this is very interesting. I know you're getting some glare from the other side of the windows, but this is uh, the, I don't know if I can get, let me see, there we go. Let's try it like this. This is the whole layout. So the other thing um, that they have in here as well is, and he pointed out to me, I actually seen it and I said something to him and I says, is that original? Was that actually part of, uh, <laughs> was that actually part of Water of Leet? And he said, yes. And this is what it is. It's remember, I don't, you gotta be a little bit older uh, than like 20 to remember these, but you remember the old, the old fire boxes that used to hang on poles? This is original. This is actually hung, and it was, and this is box 18. They were all numbered, and they were all labeled uh, in the cities. I remember these when I was a kid. I remember all of these when I was a kid, and I did try to open that, and it does not open. But um, this is a little write-up of it. If you guys want to maybe pause the video and, and read it, you can do that. You can hit the pause button now. Um, but, yeah, this was located apparently... This was located at the corner of 6th Ave and 7th Street in Waterville. This also is an original sign uh, from Waterville. So back in the day, these are what the street signs looked like in Waterville. 
he told me how he received this sign and he grinded it down, sandblasted it, whatever he did to it, and he wound up repainting it back to um, the original. Uh, this is what they looked like back then. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna see if I can get a, a picture from up on this up on this platform here. I don't know what's behind here, so. Okay, so here's the old organ. Look at this, huh? From 19, like 22. This is all from when it, uh, all from when it got remodeled. Really amazing stuff. But this organ wasn't originally here. This is not where it's set. Um, when I was talking to him, he uh, he told me, and I'll spin around and I'll show you exactly where the old organ is set um, for services. And I'm assuming whoever was giving services uh, maybe set here, or I'm not really sure. I'm not sure how the services go because um, I don't know if there's something on that or not. Yeah, there's not much of a marking on it. But, um, yeah, so this is, this is the view from being up on this stage. I always wonder what it would be like to be up on a, on a stage and see what, like, priest and altar boys. I was never an altar boy. Uh, it's just not something that ever interests me um, in life. But anyways, so here, here we go. He told me that the original organist actually sat up here, up by that exit sign. And it was actually in that little lobby uh, where I walked in, where I initially walked in. That's where the original um, or, or, uh, organ is set. So, uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's a warm day today, no air conditioning in here, but uh, still, still okay with that. So I'm gonna give you one more, I'm gonna give you one more pan here. Uh, and then we're going to end this segment. Again, these are, these here, I believe these are just heaters. Don't, don't quote me on that. So 